Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophy and it's a babbling Belgian and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today is going to be no different. Today we're going to be looking at the some of the new cards from the Black Sun expansion that just hit. I know it has been a while. I'm going to talk about that just a little bit. Um, about the channel and what has been going on recently. If you want to skip that, there's a timeline down below where you can skip to the relevant sections. Um, but I wanted to just clarify why it's been about a month since the previous video. In the meantime, we I've done about three uh, podcasts um, because Merchants of Novigrad have actually asked me to be their co-host. So from now on, every old number of weeks you'll be able to watch me uh, interview very interesting people uh, on the Merchants of Novigrad podcast so I'll be doing that as well which is why everything got a bit in the way of my own channel. I have also been extremely busy at work which also contributed to the fact that this is the first time I'm doing a Gwent deck guide again since like forever. I think it's about six weeks since I last uh, recorded that one um, video with the uh, Yennefer Illusionist. So yeah. Today, we're going to be heading into Skellige, Skellige Pirates, because I've never really went into Pirates even when the leader ability changed, so the Onslaught leader ability, I've complained about it a lot, but it is actually a lot of fun to play with it, it yourself, uh, because of course of all the, uh, the armor that you'll be getting. But let's head into the deck builder to just talk about all the cards. So I'm calling this the Clash of Clans deck. This is an Onslaught Pirates deck that features most of the new cards, everything but the new scenario card. The new scenario card is really interesting, but I don't think it's always that useful. It's powerful enough, but I can do the same thing with Magic Compass, which we'll be using in this deck as well. I'm going to be going through the cards one by one, and um, if you're not interested in that, you can also skip this and go straight to the example matches using the timeline down below. Um, but otherwise we're gonna just explain every single card one by one if you're new to my videos um, and then we'll head into example matches and then we do just a bit of an ending to the video as well. So um, just to describe the deck in general it is of course a control deck where we're pretty heavily focusing on damaging as many enemies as we can. There's a few interesting combos factored into this deck as well but we'll get to those one at a time and you'll see those in the example matches as well. So the first card that we're looking at is one of the new cards already so the seagull. Uh, there's two of them in the deck. The seagulls actually count as a beast and a pirate which is really cool. They start at one power for four provisions and on deploy you damage three units by one and then spawn a seagull in your graveyard for each target that is damaged. So if you hit an already damaged unit, this will also count. If you damage it because of the damage, that also happens. Uh, so that ends you up with three seagulls in the graveyard, a fourth one if this is dead. And whenever an enemy unit is destroyed, you summon that seagull from the graveyard back to your ranged row and give that seagull doom. So they pop back up later on. They do clog your rows a little bit. Um, but it is really fun to see in action and I really like this card because of the lore, um, the lore implication. So basically what the seagulls, the flock of seagulls does at the beginning is damage a bunch of units, they start packing at those units and then once you kill something there's food and then they come all back from the graveyard and start picking on the food again. It's, it's really, really cool. And next up we have the Dim and Light Longship. Maybe something we should talk about before we talk to, about this card is the Leader Ability. The Leader Ability is Onslaught. And Onslaught allows you to damage an enemy unit by three. And you can do that two times. So there's two charges. But whenever an enemy unit becomes damaged, you give one armor to all pirates and ships in your hand. Why am I talking about that now? Because the Dim and Light Longship has the ability to damage itself and an enemy unit by one if it's on the ranged row. It also can do this every turn because of the cooldown. Um, if this card has armor, then the one damage tick that you're doing to yourself also does, doesn't really have an effect. So that's why I wanted to talk about the leader ability first. So very good damage engine. Next up we have double Merge Roam. Merge Roam is always going to play for 9 in this deck, well most of the time, because the 3 damage is not going to hit the... Uh, the power of the card, it's going to hit the armor. Um, so it's just a very consistent 9 for 4 in this deck specifically. 
And on top of that, this is also good support for Arnagard. Arnagard is not in the deck, but we can pull him with uh, Magic Compass, which could come in handy against certain matchups. And then we have another new card, the Deranged Corsair. Uh, five provisions and four power, and on deploy you infuse an enemy unit with Death Wish, spawn Cataclysm on this row for two turns, and then you spawn Cataclysm on that same row for one turn. So on deploy basically seven points, because Cataclysm hits uh, three damage on that row. Um, randomly, it's spread out, but the uh, other deploy part of the deployability is infusing. So infusing is a new status effect where you give an ability to a unit. If you purify the infused status, you also remove that ability. So in this case, we um, infuse an enemy with a death wish ability where they spawn cataclysm on that row for another two turns. So if you kill the unit that you've given this to, there will be three turns of Cataclysm on that row in total, uh, meaning that this could potentially be 13 points for five provisions, which is a lot. Most of that usually hits, so it is very, very cool to use. Then, of course, we have the Uncreate Longships, two of those as well, four power and one armor for five provisions, and as long as this card is on the melee row, you uh, will automatically damage every unit your opponent plays by one meaning that uh, most of the time they will start out damaged as well, which is good for your leader ability. Then a double Tweersock Skirmisher, these guys uh, start at 4 power for 5 provisions and get summoned to the melee row whenever you discard them, so this is the card that we're going to discard with our discard package. Then we have one lock option, um, Jenge Fred, 7 power for 6 provisions, bit of a tech card where uh, on deploy you just lock an enemy unit if you have one damaged unit on the other side of the board, so Bloodthirst 1. So usually this should work out okay, and you get a lock. Then we have probably one of the stronger cards in this deck. So Terror of the Seas, 5 power and 2 armor for 7 provisions, and on order you lose all armor and damage an enemy unit by that amount. Which is not too uh, difficult on its own, but of course we gain armor on this card if it's in our hand whenever you damage a unit. So, uh, well, get a unit into the damaged state. Um, so this can go really, really high. And during testing, I got this to 15, 16 uh, quite regularly. Um, so this is a very powerful tall removal card. Now we have Morgvark, another part of the discard package. Whenever this card enters the graveyard during um, one of, uh, well, our turns, you summon it to the melee row and give it doomed. So you're basically resurrecting the five po point beast back to the row. Here we have Raiding Fleet, another tutor card where we give an enemy unit bleeding for four turns and then play a random bronze ship from our deck. So this is either going to be the light long ship or the uncreate long ship because there's no other uh, ships, bronze ships in our deck. Then probably one of the stronger new cards, Bjorn Stormerson, five power and two armor for eight provisions, has veteran, so moves up to six power in round two and seven in round three. And on deploy, you clash with an enemy unit. Clashing is what Arnegat used to do, um, and Krach as well. So clashing just means that both the units that are selected uh, damage each other simultaneously with their own power. So Bjorn will do five damage, six damage, seven damage, um, depending on which part of the game that you play him in, uh, on the unit that you select. And then that unit will damage Bjorn by its power as well. On order, he also has an order ability that triggers on Bloodthirst 2, so you need to have two damaged units on the other side of the board. You discard a card and move him back to your hand, so meaning that you can use him or over and over again. Works with the discard package as well, but um, since you don't draw a new card, this is not considered tinning, which is also important. Then uh, another part of the discard package, Burna Brand, 6 power for 8 provisions, and on deploy you draw 2 cards and then discard the same number of cards cards uh, which could be less of course if you only manage to draw one card so this is uh yeah just going to be allowing us to tin our deck even further and then why are we tinning our deck of course for magic compass the first time that you play magic compass because this is an echo card you can play it twice you look at the top three cards in your deck you play one and the other ones get moved to your graveyard not discarded which is important because some of the discard cards will not pop back up if you do this um, this does work with morgue bark his Morgvark triggers when he moves to the graveyard, not on this card. Um, but the skirmishers uh, only react to this card, so this will, won't happen there. Um, which is not too particular this ability, but if there are less than three cards in your deck, uh, you spawn and play a Skellige legendary card that was not in your starting deck. 
This means that we can choose whatever legendary card we want from the game um, that is in the Skelliger faction, which means that we can also play the new scenario card with Magic Compass if we want to. The other option that I usually go for is Arnagod. Arnagod also very good. Um, and there's a few other things that we definitely can do as well. And then Sucrus. Sucrus is a pirate that also works for the Tide Cloaks of Syndicate, but we're using him in a Skellige deck this time, so six power for nine provisions. And the simple passive ability where he prevents the unit to the left of him from taking any damage. So as long as Sucrus is alive, and not locked, he will protect any damage on that unit left to the left of him. This could also be a defender, um, which I think is the next card. No, the next card is Coral. But there's some very cool uh, combos that we can do with Sucrus. Uh, for example, protecting Arnagad. But we'll talk about that in a minute, because next up is the final part of our discard package. Of course, Coral, the lovely Coral. Six power for nine provisions. I think you can see here behind me there. That's probably very bad on the camera. The final card there is also Coral. Um, she has an order ability where you draw a card and then discard a card. And a passive ability where for every card you discard, you damage a random enemy unit by two. Um, which just gives us a few more points for every discard that we do, which is really handy. And now we have the Defender that I was talking about. So the Covenant of Steel used to protect a few of our uh, most important cards. And also can be protected by Sucrus, which means that they protect themselves. So the Covenant of Steel can no longer be damaged. And Sucrus can't be touched because he's behind the Defender. Uh, seven power and two armor. And if he's damaged, uh, well, they are damaged, uh, they gain a piece of armor at the end of every turn. And then, of course, the biggest pirate of all, Morgfark, Heart of Terror. We have his human form here as well. Five power and one armor for ten provisions. And on deploy, you damage an enemy unit by one. And you repeat that until that damage is well, the target is damaged, which means that this is basically almost all removal, and except you don't kill the card. So all the uh, you basically take down a green number until it's red, which, I mean, fits his uh, lovely mug, doesn't it? And now we have Croc on Crate. Of course, you saw him at the beginning of the video already. Croc on Crate, 7 power for 10 uh, provisions. He's also a pirate. And on deploy, you give 2 armor to uh, 3 pirates or ships in your hand. So that's 6 armor in total, which also could be converted into points of course he has an order ability that refreshes every two turns where you damage a unit by one but his passive is the most important part whenever you play a pirate or ship next to croc it clashes with the lowest power enemy unit meaning that all the armor you have on that unit can protect that unit from clashing with an opposing unit um, and that's why croc is very good croc is also one of our favorite cards to resurrect because, of course, this deck also has Fukusha. Fukusha, 4 power for 14 provisions. On deploy, you play a Skellige unit from your graveyard with a provision cost of 10 or less. And give it Doomed, of course. And then spawn Rain on the opposite row with a duration equal of the unused provision. So you get 2 points um, for every provision that you go below this. Because you could also, for example, resurrect um, Bjorn with this. And then, of course, our stratagem is the Mask of Uruburos, where we draw a card and discard a card and then spawn two crows in our melee row. So that's four points and a discard. So a bit of tinning, which is uh, all that we need to uh, delve right into a few example matches, because this deck is a lot of fun. Um, one more addition that you could also do, this deck doesn't need Devotion, clearly. Um, so you could, for example, put it in a Purifier. There's no Purify option in this deck as of yet. Uh, but I've been winning with this quite a lot regardless. So let's head into a few example matches and see how that works out. Okay, first matchup of the day is against... Ooh, Squiretel Movement. This might bite me in the ass, although I have a few options to kill uh, Saskia. Which is interesting. I'm gonna get rid of the second seagull. I have Burna and two cards to get rid of. And I also have Magic Compass here. So might as well get uh, rid of the other seagull as well. And we get Coral. Don't need the murder room just yet. Okay. Okay, okay. Let's start with the boat. It might actually be a good target to get moved already. So if I just start with this. If they want to start with Saskia Commander, that's actually fine. Because I can kill the first engine that Saskia spawns. And then I can use... Ooh, it's Sabertooth Tiger. Okay, and that got damaged. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to use Burna. She's going to get damaged, uh, but the front row will be completely filled. 
Because Coral is going to get hit regardless, so I'm just going to grab two cards and then toss away one of the skirmishers. Yeah, I might as well toss away both skirmishers already. There we go. There might be a crushing trap incoming at some point, but it doesn't really matter right now. And if they want to move something, then I'll just put something right next to that. So it's fine for now. It is a new unit deck though, which is probably the worst matchup that I could have gotten. But I need to win round one against something like this and then just keep pushing. Okay, an Aramancy into a trap. That might actually be a crushing trap. I could try a magic compass at this point, um, but I think I'm going to see what the trap is. It is not that, it's going to be a crushing trap. So that took two damage off the bolt, um, but now that row has a unit. So I can put whatever I want next to it. And if it is a crushing trap, it's going to trigger next turn. Ooh, surrender. Surrender and then the crushing trap. Nice. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm going to use Coral now, because uh, I can draw and discard with her. And she can put Morg Fork in front, so that also just denies value on the Sabertooth Tiger. Um, I do need to be careful, because I don't have a lot of Bronze Boats. I have no Bronze Boats at the moment in my deck for Raiding Fleet. I could do Mask of Uruburus, but there's no targets yet, and no nothing that I really need to use it on, so... The biggest problem is, is that my deck is filled with gold cards in such a way that I really don't want to use Magic Compass right now. Let's do the Dim and Light Longship on that one. Okay. Mask of Uruburos. I mean, get a deranged one. I think the Raiding Fleet isn't going to help me. I've done most of the other thinning. Because either this, I discard the Deranged Corsair now, which is actually a, an option. I'll get rid of the range course here for now. Raiding Fleet is useless at the moment. So next up I really need to use Magic Compass. With all the risks that that entails. Okay, we got moved on the boat there. But they have no... Ooh, they don't have a target for that now. That was a peculiar choice. They're going to have to move something else. But that's... There's nothing for them to move. Okay. And there's Saskia. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of Milva and I'm gonna clash with the matron there. Clash with that and then I'm gonna onslaught the Milva. It's 11.25. I don't know why you would move that. This is not a Renfrey deck either. So I don't know what the tactic here is. Oh, I really don't want a compass here. I'm going to have to throw away something valuable and I'm losing. Okay, it's Maxi. Oh boy, here goes nothing. Magic compass. Okay. That is actually not too bad. I mean, Morkfark is useless, but he was going to be useless anyway. So... This is way better than expected. I could even use Seagull, but Seagull is going to get less points. And he's going to end up in the graveyard anyway, so... There we go. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Just a little bit of armor. We are getting closer to each other, and I'm guessing with the next Saskia ping, that's going to... Yeah, they're going to grab round one. God damn it. Okay, and that's Compass gone. Okay, I need to I need to pass here. They're gonna get the round. Um, yeah, but I can't really do anything else. It's fine. Kind of know what I'm gonna get. I'm getting my better cards still, and I know what I can keep in the deck. Uh, but next up is gonna have to be close. So I'm gonna get three cards now and three cards next. So Magic Compass is gone. Right, Magic Compass is gone. They just removed that, so that's no longer relevant. Um, okay, let's get rid of the long ship. So Cruz is going to be actually less useful. Um, especially compared to the other cards in the deck. So I'm going to get rid of Sucrus and we get a Seagull. Okay. Okay. 
That could have been worse. Seagull it is. <laughs> so that's going to be two seagulls of carryover. Um, but they do form a nice target for um, the Dolblatana Archer. This is going to be a really funky match. So Fukusha, Jenge, and I don't need that. That's the last thing I want. So Chris, but I think that's going to be the only card. Yeah, yeah, this is fine. So either it's going to be Murder Room for some of the other cards, but this is basically a perfect hand. Okay. Um, I'm going to go Defender first. Although Defender is really good against if I can do Croc. And I can resurrect Croc, so that's not, not the problem. Should have put him in the back. Um, Covenant of Steel, Terror of the Seas, and the Ranged Corsair. So now it's all about building up Bloodthirst. Well, not Bloodthirst, getting damaged units, which is basically Bloodthirst, but... Yeah, fine. Okay. That's good. Um, I can't bleed anything. So this is useless. Oh, the Defender ping is so annoying. I'm gonna do it. There we go. Just Defender in front of that. It's not gonna hit anything. Uh, and I'm gonna get armor for that, so that's fine. And if they don't have a Purify... I might actually be able to defend the Defender. Okay. I can put Sucrus over here. And that's a... Okay, that's fine. And then I can put some more damage on... Oh boy, this is gonna be really weird. Ebar, Ebir, 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 Ebir Hattori. Okay. It's fine, I still have a Resurrect, remember? Um, now I can put the Bleeding on Ebir and put the Longship down. I'm not gonna put him right next to Croc, because that's gonna be annoying otherwise. Defender keeps going. Nature's Rebuke on Sucrus. And there are the two seagulls. Um, and I think now is the time to play Fukusha because I don't have any traps on the board. Would it be better to have Sucrus still on the board now? I think so. Uh, so I think Fukusha into Sucrus. So random pings will have at least a couple of targets that don't really do anything. Scorch. Are you freaking kidding me? Yeah, Jange then. Ah, uh, this is so annoying. And that's also not gonna do much. Yeah, put most of the armor there. I'm not gonna have anything to target. Wow. Ah. Okay, it's probably going to be pretty close, but yeah, on Eremancy. A Cat Witcher? Oh boy, this is not even going to be enough. It will depend on the... Oh my god. I thought it was going to hit... If it hit the army, it would have, they would have lost regardless. Holy shit. We won with a control deck against no unit. I think that says a lot about the deck. And our second match for today is against the almighty monsters. And that might be difficult, although we'll get a lot of targets that can be damaged. Because if this is relics, they do tend to go for um, high base power, but not boosting. Um, in that case, I can actually keep the seagulls for once. I'm gonna get rid of the murder room for now. Ooh, that's a lot of ships. I only have one discard card at the moment. Ooh, boy. This is not ideal. Not, not, not ideal at all. But we might just get to see the seagulls in actions quite a bit. Seagulls, by the way, if you count by maximum, it could go for 8 points in total. Um, which I can do right away, actually. Um, so let's just seagull... One, two, and three. And that's three seagulls and a lot of armor, three times. Sadly, we don't have um, the Tire of the Seas on the, in our hands. That would have been really nice. Maybe we can get it with Core. Oh, what the... F what the actual flip? Okay, let's put Coral on the board. It's 
draw cards. That is not that useful. There we go. I don't actually know how the scenario practically works, so... Whenever you play a unit with Thrive, trigger Cursed Damsel first. Whenever you play a unit, it, if it would not trigger Thrive, boost it by two first. Oh, and that actually triggers the Thrive of the other Andrega Larva. That is funny. That is really funny. Um, gonna put Bleeding on that one just to get another boat out. But I'm not gonna be able to do much more, I think. And that gets moved. But that was another Thrive trigger. Okay. I'm gonna do the ranged Corsair on that Wild Hunt Rider. It might kill it automatically. Uh, I guess we'll see. Nope, it does not, but it did trigger another uh, round of armor. And then I can use another Seagull, by the way, so that is gonna be very funny. That's eating that, and there goes the Seagulls. I think I'm still fine. Because uh, I can now use the Seagull to start damaging more units, like this. Um, anything else I want to hit? Maybe not that. I need to hit this. And this. Because that triggers the tree seagulls. There we go. And we do get Cataclysm now. And that kills another unit. I can use the Dim and Light Longship to also get some damage output. Uh, but other than that, I'm really low on cards that are actually useful to me. Oh, shit. Okay, try it again. Makes sense. Um, I can put the Dim and Light Longship down and start hitting the Neko Warrior there again. Because um, I want to see if I can use Cataclysm again, but that doesn't seem to be working. Okay. I'm gonna just use the, the ranged Corsair in a normal way, um, and I'm gonna use Onslaught. Although, I do get three points there. No, I'm gonna use Onslaught, just to be sure. I don't want to risk this. There we go. I didn't even need to use Onslaught there, I think, but... I mean, I needed to, but I could have done it on the, on the Damsel instead. Okay. Not the best first round, but I did win. And I have Magic Compass now. I'm gonna even, unless I get Burna here, no I don't. I'm gonna get rid of Morgfark. Because I can maybe get him away with the Magic Compass then. Um, but Croc is gonna be first regardless. This is gonna be tight. But I need to be as oppressive as possible now. So I'm gonna put Croc... I need to learn to put Croc in the back, but... Um, and then get these three guys with some armor. And now I can double clash, um, which is a very interesting combo. So you can double clash with Bjorn. So now we get a lock. That's less ideal. Uh, so we don't... Well, it's actually not that bad. Uh, I'm going to put the Uncreate Longship down first, um, just because... It doesn't clash. It would have been nice because it would have killed Dorgare. Uh, but it now will damage everything that comes on the board. I still don't have enough cards, by the way, in my deck to trigger the second compass. I need to get Burna for that to work. Ooh, it's gonna be it's gonna be close. It's gonna be close. Okay, the drowner is gonna move that again. Okay. It's fine. I'm just going to start hitting the Drowner, because the Drowner will just come back every single time. Because it triggers Strife, so it will go back to 2, so I can damage it again. And there we have Kayanti, that's going to be the kitty cat, right? Okay, so I can kill the cat here, um, like this. So I scratch a lot, we get another set of goals, the original 2 goals. I can clash later on, so I'm going to use Magic Compass now, I think. So Magic Compass into Burna, yes. Yes, okay, that's good. And two cards that I 
can't really use. Get drawn there, and then two... Oh boy. Okay. Okay. It's fine. Um, I'm going to get rid of Sucrus and Covenant of Steel then. Those are the worst cards out of the two. So that's Fuka. Um, I'm going to clash with Fuka. Because Fuka is Thrive 2. Um, so there we go. That doesn't lose many points. So that was basically 10 more points. Um, and I can hit Dorgaray. And then I think I'm going to keep Fukusha for the last round. Okay, that's really good. That Sir Scratchable is there now. Um, that they had to play him now. Because this card is broken. So because this card can be replayed all over again. So that triggers Thrive again, and then Vigern is going to be enough, yeah. Okay, so equal cards into the final round. With, I think, equal point potential, the cats are gone at the very least. It's also insane to me that that cat has uh, immunity. Um, I do need to check. We're at three cards. Oh, crap. Okay. Okay, but I have a guaranteed Morgvark. It's fine. It's fine this way. Um, so I didn't... I must have missed one of the discards then. I'm not gonna get... Yeah, I'm not gonna get... I could resurrect... No, I could. I could resurrect Coral. And then I should have probably got... Should have gotten for... Uh, gone for uh, Morgvark. Okay, to start with... The Woodland Spirit and then... On Aeromancy, is that going to be what I think it's going to be? Cross chain? Yeah, there it is. That was the wrong way around, wasn't it? For Cross chain. Oh, another mistake. Yeah, indeed. Um, I could just lock it, actually. The reason why I'm going to do it in this way is because otherwise Chengi is not going to be useful to me. And that also triggers the armor again. Uh, so I'm going to lock Post Chain. So unless they have a Purify, which they don't. This is fine. Okay. What's the best play? So Fukusha... Yeah, I'm going to get Fukusha to go... I could even go Burna. Burna is potentially more points. Um, and also one provision less, so more rain. Um, so Burna... Drawing two cards, if I don't get Morgvark, I do get Morgvark. Is Morgvark more interesting than Terry of the Seas at this point? I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna take the risk. I'm gonna take the risk. This is pretty... pretty dangerous. Okay, that's fine. But I can Magic Compass. I can grab Junot is in Magic Compass, right? Guess we'll see soon enough. Ooh, wow. Uh, Junot is not a legendary. Um, I could do Heim. Heim is 15 points at this point. Because Arnagada don't have Sucrus. Harold, Heimdall. No, I think it's the better option. Uh, so Heim. And I can swap with Woodland Spirit and that just gave me 15 points. And now we get Goliath. Okay. It's fine, we won. Boom! So scratch a lot in the graveyard. Twice. Alright, that was really cool. And I think that displayed the power of this deck quite nicely. Control is doing really well, even against those Renfrey decks, because you have a lot of targets to damage, especially with this deck in particular. You have a lot of units to damage, which gives you armor, 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 armor. And then all the other cards that we just displayed are just really good at taking advantage of all of that. The new additions really do a lot of work. The seagulls, you've seen that in that final round. They just keep coming back. There's a lot of seagulls on the board and they do give you some points. Um, at full value, it's 8 points for 4, so don't underestimate those seagulls. Um, and then the deranged, the deranged Corsair is just amazing for 5 provisions. I think a bit too amazing for five provisions, but I'll get, but I guess we'll uh, see how this evolves. And then of course, Bjorn um, is, is amazing. The scenario is probably the weakest part of the Skellige batch, um, but uh, yeah, that's why I didn't run it uh, immediately. You can use Magic Compass if you really need to, 
uh, get the scenario card. Uh, we've seen it, uh, did we see it? No, we didn't see it here, but it's an option to grab if you want to, and then you can progress it with the rest of your pirates. Other than that, Arnegeld I think is a very good option, especially with the Murdroams, uh, it just takes care of the last four to five units that your opponent plays, um, and you don't have to worry about any of that, um, especially if they can't answer the Defender or Sucrus in any way. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think about the Clash of Clans deck, the link is in the description, the link to the Playground website. Don't forget to upvote it there as well, because every support is really appreciated. And we just got started for this month, so uh, uh, lots of more, lots more deck guides coming your way. If you have any feedback, also let me know, either in the comment section down below, or you can also talk to me on Twitter, that's T-R-O-V-N-U-T on Twitter, because uh, that's what we're here for, after all, trying to help each other out and improving each other's decks. So thanks enormously for watching, and I hope to see you in the next episode of Quintage or the next podcast, who knows? See you and stay nutty.